The reason for that is you've seen this bird flying. This is this bird flying her heart out. She's flying as hard and as fast as she possibly can. Now that that shows you that she's not designed to migrate. She's designed to There's stay in two lines of defence. The first line of defence this bird's got are these tufts on the top of her head. These tufts on the top of her head are called ear tufts. Nothing at all to do with their hearing. They're purely and simply to do with either alluring a mate, because the big ear tufts are these great big huge feet. Now if you look at these great big huge feet, they're capable of taking down something the size of a reasonable sized rabbit, something along those sort of lines. But in reality, she's never going to take down on that size. You can tell she's never going to take down on that size. And you've seen how weak her beak is. Having a beak this weak, if she was to take down a nice large piece of prey, that would take forever and a day for it to get colour. All right. As you can't see colour, there's no point in having colour receptors in your eyes. So, whereas you've got three types of cones in your eye, a little bit like the TV set, they've only got two types of cones in their eye. It means that they see in black and white, but it also gives this very dark, almost black coloration to their eye. Whereas the Dian now is not going to be hunting nice cropped grass like we got here. It's going to be hunting in rough, um, uh, and it gave you a much better definition of colour uh, when you're looking for berries and the like. <laughs> Which is why women are attracted to red shoes, and it's also why women can't read maps. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> from the, beak. the reason I put the food directly into the bird's beak is because the, the owl has the same sort of vision as you, which is called binocular vision, which means it sees this one They're single in flight. Now the reason they want to do that is for a couple of reasons really. The first reason is these are quite a small predator, so being quite a small predator, if you've got a nice large piece of food in your foot, that's going to attract the attention of other predators, and they're going to come along and they're going to steal it off of you. Now the only defence you've got are your feet, so you want to free your feet up as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, so we have to actually physically move this bird on. The way we move this bird on is we used a nice big stroppy bird of prey. Uh, we used an American red-tailed buzzard. You'll often see it signposted up as an American red-tailed hawk. Uh, the reason for that, well, that is that uh, uh, when uh, Bill was a lad, he'll tell you that when he used to go cycling, hedgerows were much, much taller uh, than they are today. The reason for that is someone in London, someone in government, decided the countryside looked a little bit untidy. So they put a maximum and a minimum height on a hedgerow. And this had a huge effect on many, many species. Hedgerows really aren't designed to be the little short stocky things that we have today. They're designed to be tall and straggly. Uh, because they were designed pretty much as a wind um, breath. So if you look at the feathers of the tawny owl, we have three times as many tawny owls as we have barn owls. Uh, you'll see the tawny owl feathers are very hard pen, very much like this bird here, designed to cope with the wind, the rain, the elements that we have in this country. Whereas the